فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم واذا شغل به اي بالعلم if somebody busies himself preoccupies himself with knowledge وبغيرها and other than knowledge is دادا تفرقا وشتاتا it increases you in division in being split وإنما تجمع الهمة على المطلوب بتفقد ثلاثة أمور in order to bring your aspiration and your drive and your intentions all together the sheikh says three things is what you need to look for three things is what makes you bring everything intact and you draw your head in towards a direction Whereas the person whose intentions are so much, as I said, is trying to put your legs in two, two different things and it's, they're all going different directions, you'll split into half. The, the first one, the author says, أَوَّلُهَا أَمَا أَوَّلِهَا Both ways you can say it. What does it say in your copy? It's, you can say أَوَّلُهَا or you can say أَوَّلِهَا If you say أَوَّلِهَا which is the kasra, it's a badal from the word bitafakudi, which is a jara and a majroor, right? And the badal is from the tawabi' al arba, right? That's grammar. Or if you want, you can say awaluha, and then it becomes a jumla isti'nafiya, it becomes a mubtada. It's an independent sentence, brand new, nothing to do with the previous. So whichever one you say. The same is thaniha, thaniuha, you can say if you want. ثالثها أو ثالثها يمكن سيعوه أما ثالث ثالث ثالثها أو ثالثها. The author says the first one is الحرص على ما ينفع فمتى وفق العبد إلى ما ينفع حرص عليه. The first one is the first thing that allows you to bring your intentions and your drive together is الحرص striving striving to what benefits you. فمتى وفق العبد على ما ينفع حرص عليه. Because whenever you as an individual strive to what benefits you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow you to what? To gain that which is going to benefit you. The second that author mentions is al isti'anatu billahi azza wa jalla fi tahsili. Seeking help and aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in gaining knowledge. Asking Allah. Many people say to you, I want to seek knowledge, I want to do this, I want to do that. Who today, before they left, made dua for Allah to allow knowledge to enter their heart? So it's a serious question you need to ask yourself. Who actually came today, before they left, or before they even started the dars, or before they even took on anything, they say, Rabbi zinni ilma. It was said that Imam Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he would say, Ya Mu'allima Dawuda, wa Ya Mufahima Sulaiman. Ya Mu'allima Dawuda, allimni wa Ya Mufahima Sulaiman, fahimni. The teacher of Dawood teach me. And the one who had allowed Sulaiman to understand, make me understand. Istaad is very powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the greatest surah in the Quran, Allah took out isti'ana from ibadah when it's part of ibadah. And he allowed it to stand shoulder to shoulder with ibadah. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Isti'ana is ibadah. It's a branch and a type of ibadah. Allah took it out and allowed it to stand shoulder to shoulder with ibadah for a reason. Because of its importance. Just like Allah took out Jibreel and Mikael from the angels. What did Allah take out from? Allah took Jibreel and Mikael out from the angels because they're the best of the two, they're the two best angels from all the other angels. So the person has to seek help from Allah in this knowledge which he wants to attain. And the author then brings a line of poetry which is what? This is a statement of Ali ibn Abi Talib. The author doesn't mention, as I said before, who are the ones who say these statements? He generally doesn't mention it. And I don't know, brothers, if you guys pick on little information when you're reading and you're looking at things. But generally, scholars, you're going to see two things. You're going to see two things, generally speaking. 
every hikmah and wisdom or lines of poetry that are mentioned, they are generally ascribed to two people. The overwhelming majority of times. And I generally like to pick on things like this when I'm reading. Ali ibn Abi Talib and Imam Shafi'i. You're going to find that very often. That even it, it could be possible that somebody before them must have, might have said this statement. But generally people like to touch it to them too. So you always have to observe more. Is it true that he said it? Because if Shafi'i is, is said to Shafi'i, and then we find that somebody attributed to Imam Malik authentically, who's going to be given the pre pre presidency here? Malik is before Shafi'i. Are you with me? Generally. It could happen that Shafi'i and Malik were at the same time, and that he said it before him. But it's generally something I realized. That many of the times people attribute wise statements Lines of poetry that, that contain wise speech to Ali or Imam Shafi'i. Anyways, the poet's the statement of the poet which he brought, and this is according to the Shi'r, is called Bahr al-Tawil. Those who have studied Al-Urud wal Qawafi will know. This is called Bahr al-Tawil. إِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ عَوْنٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِلْفَتَى If there is not Allah's aid, Allah's help for an individual, فَأَوَّلُ مَا يَجْنِي عَلَيْهِ اجْتِهَدُهُ the first thing that's going to transgress on him is his own nafs. If it's not if it's not for Allah's help for you, if it's not because Allah helped you, the first thing that's going to destroy you. And the first thing that's going to transgress on you is what? Your own, your own efforts are going to kill you. So you coming out today, running around, taking your bag, putting your bag, backpack on, coming here, sitting down, taking a pen, that's not going to help you. It is a part of it, but that effort of yours can actually be your enemy. That's why you need Allah's help. And that's why they, they used to know, the Salaf al Hadil Ummah, they knew that that was what, what the reality of seeking knowledge was. Anything they wanted to do, they used to ask Allah for help. And they used to show that they're in need of Allah subhanahu وَلِذَلِكَ the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met and he saw Mu'adh ibn Jabal one day and he said to Mu'adh Ya Mu'adh inni la uhibbuk Mu'adh I love you فَلَا تَدْعَنَّ Do not forget to say after every prayer that you pray اللهم أعني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك Oh Allah aid me, help me in your remembrance وشكرك and your gratitude and also help me in perfecting ibadah towards you don't forget that. Scholars differ on what is meant by Dubur Salah. Does it mean whilst you're in the prayer at the ending? Or does it mean once you say Salaam Alaikum and Salaam Alaikum? Is it then Dubur is different in the Arabic language? The third is Adam al Ajzi an Bulugh al Bughiyati minhu. The third one is do not become lazy in trying to attain. Bughya means what you're looking for. Adam al Ajzi. Do not become lazy. In what? An Bulugh al Bughyati. In trying to attain what you're looking for. A lot of the people, they get lazy. The first day, the, the, the Ma'had, when it opens, everybody's there, pens, you get an extra tables in. Wow, subhanAllah, this is too many people. Just give it a week. I'm being very nice, just give it a week. Sometimes it's less than that, but let's just be nice, one week. What happens? Four who haven't brushed their teeth come, confused, the, and give it another two, three weeks. Allah alim, if they're going to stay as well, that's it, halas. A lot of the people like, a lot of the people, they like the idea of speed scholars. They like the idea. They don't like the reality. So, it's the idea that we like, wow, I want to be a scholar one day. That's why I think it's very important when people are teaching people not to just tell the glory times of Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah at the last moments of his life. But what should be told to them is how he got there. Because a lot of people only look at that time of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah and Ahmed ibn Hanbal and Shafi'i and Na'imah, that last part of their lives. Do you, have you really looked at how they got there? 
They got there by urinating, their urine turned into blood. So, so today somebody will say to you, well, I would love to come to the class, well, I, but I'm busy. I'll come inshallah ta'ala some other time. So the issue of ta'adim al-ilm. We said yesterday, if mirmataini hasanataini, two little ribs were being given out in the masjid today after every class, this place, subhanAllah, it will be overpacked, right? That's the issue. These are the three that he mentions. So don't give up, brothers. Do not give up. Ajz and giving up shouldn't be a characteristic of a person who has high aspirations. A person who has high aspirations, that's not his. Giving up is for people who are weak. Keep going, keep pushing yourself, motivate yourself every day, wake up. Say, I know it doesn't look good. I'm still not there where I want to reach. But every time you fall, get up. You fall again, get up. You fall again, get up. Just keep getting up. As long as you're getting up and you're moving forward, you're honorable. Don't look at this person who's not falling. Allah gifts people in different ways. Not everybody's the same. Your own fingers are not the same. Allah didn't make everybody the same. But you know why you're, you're honorable? He may not, he might be weak that if he fell that he will never get up. But you're strong that you fell and you still got up. And you made your way. And you didn't memorize. Wallahi, one of the things that the Salaf used to do is just so they're consistent. They used to come to the halaqa on Friday when there was no class. They would sit in the halaqa. There's no lesson that day. They know there's no class. Fridays are days off. They'll still come. And they will sit from the time that the Shaykh used to come until the time he used to go. Inshallah ta'ala, soon we're going to be seeing a qira'a called qira'atul jard that some of the a'imma used to do. Khatib al-Baghdadi and others, we're going to see them. Ya ikhwa, this is what's needed, wallahi. Ya ikhwa, a little boy came to his mom and he said, Mom, I want to go to the masjid, I want to pray. He loved to see the idea of going to the masjid early. So he came to the masjid. When he came to the masjid, his mother allowed him to go. He went and he came early, too early, that the masjid was closed. So he saw a little hole inside the masjid. So he went inside the hole in the masjid. When he went inside the hole of the masjid, there was a sharp object standing out on the side. So he got, he got his leg in it. So he went through his flesh and his leg. Blood started to gush from his feet, from his leg. The Mu'addin came into the masjid, saw him there. But back in those days, it wasn't carpet, so it was sand. So, it wasn't. so he tied his leg and he sat down. He got pain, but to attain being in the front row, it comes with hard work, sah. So this is what he's going through. So when the Imam came and he led the prayer and he finished, by then his leg is bleeding. He saw the blood. So he said to him, young boy, what happened to you? So he told him the story. And he said to him, Uqtub, write, I'm going to tell you some lines of poetry, write this. He said, Dabibta lil majdi wa sa'una qad balagu, jahdan nufusi wa alqaw dunahu al-uzara, wa kabidu al-majda hatta malla akhtarhum, wa aniq al-majda man awfa wa man sabara. La tab, la, la tahsab anna al-majda tamran anta akiluh, lan tablug al-majda hatta tal'aq al-sabara. In summary, what he tells the boy is that, what you're trying to attain today was success. You were trying to attain something. You had a goal, you set yourself. You wanted to pray in the masjid the earliest, the first. You wanted to become a person who prays in the front row. But my son, you have to remember that whatever you're trying to attain is not like a, something you just pick up from somewhere, a date that you just pick it up like that. You're never going to attain something unless you come with patience. And patience is something which is very bitter, very, very bitter. It's easy for the person who's not going through it to say it, na'am. But sabr is a matiyyatul la yadillu raakibuha. It's a, it's a riding beast that if you sit on, you're never going to be lost. It's the best thing a person can have, patience. Don't worry. Don't worry, it's going to get there. It may not be today the results that you see. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be the day after. But one day, one day, you will get there. As long as you're getting up. 
And as long as you're moving, you will one day see the results, inshallah ta'ala. All of these three that the author brought, which is Al-Hirsu ala ma yanfa' Al-Isti'ana to billahi azza wa jalla fi tahsiri Adam al-Ajzi an bulug al-Bughiyati These three, the author says, وَقَدْ جُمِعَتْ هَذِي الْأُمُورِ الثَّلَاثَةَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ They're all found in one hadith. All of these three that he mentioned, he got it from one hadith. And it is, الَّذِي رَوَاهُ مُسْلِمُ بْنُ الْحَجَّاجِ Al-Imam Muslim narrated it. Yeah? What did he write now? Muslim ibn? Did he write ibn? Hayyay, hayyay. You should pay attention. He wrote Muslim ibn Hajjaj, right? He wrote Alif. Yeah? The copy is the original copy. Sheikh Yasin has it. What is it? Yeah? He writes Alif. Why did he write the Alif now? We just said Muslim ibn Hajjaj. Hajjaj is his father's name. Yeah, he broke the qa'idah that we just gave. There's another qa'idah that he's following. Shaykh Usaymi. He's trying to teach you different things that you need to understand. And what is it? That if the name falls in the first line of a paragraph, you write the alif. Just like it fell here right now. Are you with me, brothers? If the name falls in the first line of a paragraph, you will write the alif. Did he write Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba? Did he write ibn Abi Shayba? No, he didn't write ibn Abi Shayba, you see? But he wrote ibn, ibn al-Hajjaj, صح? He doesn't mention this in his shuruh or explanations, but it's something that you need to all pick up on. You're reading a book, you need to get fawaid. Why did he write it here? Why did he not write it here? Always ask yourself these questions. Rawahu Muslim ibn al hajjaj قال حدثنا أبو بكر بن أبي شيبة وابن نمي قال both of them said so who's the قال أبو بكر بن أبي شيبة and also ابن نمي he must have narrated from these two these are both of his shiurs both of them is who he narrated from and both of them narrated from the same شيخ آه the Sheikh is Abdullah ibn Idris and Rabi'at ibn Uthman and Muhammad ibn Yahya ibn Habban. This, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to see in Nukhbatul Fikr today, inshallah ta'ala. This issue of Habban. Some people think this is a mistake. No, it's not. Habban is one. Habban is different. This one is called Muhammad ibn Yahya ibn Habban ibn Muqid. He's known. Very well known. His name is Muhammad ibn Yahya ibn Habban ibn Muqid. So you say Habban, and you have to know the difference. You guys have to know that the scholars before never used to have these dots. They never used to have these harakat on it. There are no dots. How would you distinguish between Abbas and Ayash? Dots. You write Abbas right now, and write Ayash. The only difference between the two is what? Dots. They would have no dots. Are you with me, brothers? They would have no and no dots. And they would be able to tell the difference. Because all of it was what? That's how knowledge was before. Now you just Google, search it. Pops up. Should Google Allah is a mufti. Google is Sheikh. Wikipedia is a mufti, sah? Wikipedia is a mufti. Ah, he's a mufti. And the hadith is on Abi Hurairah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abu Hurairah's name, his real name is Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhrin. Ad-Dawsi is from the people of Dawus. He came into Islam with, who's, who brought him into Islam? Abu Hurairah, Tufayl ibn Amr ad-Dawsi brought him into Islam, sah? Abu Hurairah is a Yemeni from Yemen. Those are people from Yemen. And he only stayed with the Prophet for how many years? Three or four years. Some say four, some say three. Ya Ikhwat al Three or four years, look how many narrations he came with. How? Abu Hurairah mentions it himself. One day he came to the Messenger of Allah and he said to the Prophet, Man as'adun nasa bi shafa'atika yawm al qiyamah. Who is the person, the day of judgment, who is going to be the most successful person towards your intercession? The Prophet looked at him and he said, Abu Hurairah, 
I knew no one would ever ask me a question like this except you. When I saw your striving and your heart, your effort, Abu Huraira. How striving you was, I knew no one else would ask me a question like this. It's a very striving individual, Abu Huraira. And he mentions it himself. He says, I narrated all these narrations, I took all of these narrations because I sought knowledge with an empty stomach. Other people were busy with what? Other people were busy with business and trainings. That's what busied them and preoccupied them. He had what, this concept of what? Jam'u himmatin nafsi alayhi. His whole aspiration came into one thing. And today, today he has the most narrations. And the enemies of Islam, like the Rafid, alayhim la'ainullah, they hate Abu Hurairah. And Shaykh al-Albani said something very powerful, لِأَنَّهُ كَسَرَ ظَهْرَهُمْ He broke their backs with narrations, too many narrations. Wherever they can't go, they, wherever they stand, there's a narration of Abu Hurairah waiting for them. Speaking about the virtue of Bakr, Al-Ubar, Al-Uthman, and Ali. So, and ahkam and rulings that their religion doesn't believe. So Abu Hurairah, they don't like him. And the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال that the Prophet said, Ihris ala ma yanfa'uka wa sta'in billah wa la ta'jiz. Wa la ta'jiz, it comes from the word ajaz, ya'jiz, darab, yadribu. فَعَلَ يَفْعِلُ صح؟ So, تَعْجِزُ It means to be lazy. So, احرس, strive, عَلَى مَا يَنْفَعُكَ That which will benefit you. وَاسْتَعِبْ بِاللَّهِ Seek aid and help from Allah. وَلَا تَعْجِزْ And do not be one who is lazy and unable to do something. نعم. You read it? Then the author says, فَمَنْ أَرَادَ جَمْعَ هِمَّتِهِ عَلَى الْعِلْمِ Anybody who wants to bring his mind and his intention and his drive to knowledge, فَلْيُشْعِلْ فِي نَفْسِهِ شُعْلَةَ الْحِرْصِ Ignite the fire of striving in yourself. Hype yourself up. If a car is switched off, the ignition is switched off, can the car move? Can you even think about driving fast? If your car switches off on a traffic light and there's another nice car next to you and it's mm, 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 and you're gonna have to deal with your watch. I'm not driving a nice Nissan Micra anymore. The deal, real deal. And your car switches off. Are you gonna win? So you can't even beat him in a race if you're switched off. This is the same when it comes to seeking knowledge. If you really wanna come with the real required amount of taking in, then ignite yourself, switch yourself on. You have to be alert and ready. فَلْيُشْعِلْ It means to ignite and to light. It means to lit. فِي نَفْسِهِ شُعْلَةَ الْحِرْصِ شُعْلَةَ here means the fire. Burn yourself, wake yourself up. What? الْحِرْصِ Striving. لِأَنَّهُ يَنْفَعُهُ Because it benefits you. This is what you need. Ah, it's what you need. بَلْ كُلُّ خَيْرٍ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ إِنَّمَا هُوَ ثَمَرَةٌ مِنْ ثَمَرَاتِ الْعِلْمِ Because every good that you see in this world and every good that you see in the hereafter the fruit of it is what? It's a fruit from the fruit of what? Knowledge And in this statement the author got he got it from Imam Al-Qarafi, the Maliki scholar, in his Kitab Al-Furuq, he says, Al-ilmu aslu kulli khayrin. That knowledge is the foundation of every good there is. Ibn Al-Qayyim also said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, Aslu kulli khayrin fi dunya wal akhira, Al-ilmu wal adlu, Wa aslu kulli sharrin fi dunya wal akhira, Al-jahlu wal dhulmu. Ibn Al-Qayyim says, the foundation of every good in this world and in the hereafter is in knowledge and justice. And every and the foundation of every evil in this world and the hereafter is ignorance and oppression. And as you all know, we were created in the natural state of ignorance and oppression. In no kind of Aluman Jahula. The ori original state of everybody is ignorance and what? On oppression. Every single day of your life, what are you trying to attain? 
You're trying to attain knowledge in order to remove and to repel what? Ignorance. And you're also coming with justice in order to repel oppression. So that statement the author is saying, he's got it from those two noble Imams. وَلْيَسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ and also seek help from Allah. And do not become lazy from any matters relating to it. Then and only then are you going to attain what you're looking for. And you're going to find success in what you're hoping for. The word Bugya, it can be placed a Dhamma on the back. So you can say Bugya. Or you can say bighya. Both ways are correct. Bidammil ba'i wa kasriha. You can place a dhamma on the ba' or you can place a kasra on the ba'. There's a statement that the scholars mention and it's a hikmah. It's, no, it's attributed to Ibn Ata al Iskandari. Rahimahullah. It's attributed to him. That he said, Man lam takullahu bidayatun muhriqa, lam takullahu nihayatun mushriqa. He said, anyone who doesn't have a beginning, which is, if he's not got a beginning, which he's lit himself, ignited himself, he doesn't have, in the first steps of seeking knowledge, if you don't wake yourself up, you don't light yourself up, you don't ignite yourself up, لم تكن له النهاية المشرقة You're not going to have a bright ending. You're not going to get a bright Mushriqa means to bright, uh, when something is bright. You're not going to have a good ending, basically. Naam. قَالَ وَفَقَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى قَالَ لِجُنَيْدِ مَا طَلَبَ أَحَدٌ شَيْئًا بِجِدٍّ وَصِدْقٍ إِلَّا نَالَهُ فَإِنْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَنَلْهُ كُلَّهُ نَالَ بَعْضَهُ The author here now brings the statement of Al-Junaid. Junaid, he's an imam from the Aimah of the Sufiya. He's an imam from the Aimah of the Sufiya. And the Sufi, as you know, as time went on, they changed. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah spoke about them. Junaid, on the other hand, he was from the noble people. Ibn Taymiyyah praised him highly, praised him a lot, Shaykh al Islam. And he also praised Abu Sulaiman al Darani. Those two, they are Ahmad Sufiya. Sufis, they bring them a lot. In the Kitab al Qushayri, al Qushayriya, you find him, Ihya Ulum al Deen. Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, they narrate them. But they have statements that don't go against the Sharia, generally. Some scholars, they say they do. But they're not like the Sufi that you see today. One of the things that was transmitted from al, uh, the Al-Junaid said, because his teacher, who, took, who, he took, who he took from Junaid, was Abu Sulaiman al-Darani. Junaid said, I heard my teacher Sulaiman al-Darani say this statement. رُبَّمَا يَقَعُ فِي قَلْبِ أَنُّكْتَةٌ مِنْ نُكَةِ الْقَوْمِ أَيَّامًا Sometimes what will happen is I may hear a benefit from the benefits of the Sufiya that he's with, his own people. And then he said فَلَا أَقْبَلُ مِنْهُ I don't accept it from them. إِلَّا بِشَاهِدَيْنِ عَدْلَيْنِ الْكِتَابُ وَالسُّنَّةِ Unless they come with two testimonies, two witnesses that back up what they are saying is benefit. The Kitab and the Sunnah. That's what I wait for. When they say something, I say, okay, who, did the Kitab say this? Did the Sunnah say this? Okay, I'll take it then. Now that is khayr. That's not what you find with the Sufiya today. Rather, their whole old objective and the way they are now as they change is that they become mu'aridina lil kitab wa sunnah. They are in opposition towards the Kitab and the, and the Sunnah. Al Junaid said, Rahimahullah, ma talaba ahadun shay'an bi jiddin wa sidqin illa na lahu. There is not a person. This, part, this is a statement very powerful. Ma talaba ahadun shay'an. There is not a person who requests a thing bi jiddin with, sinc with sincere striving. Wa sidqin and truthfulness. Illa na lahu, except he attains it. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَنَلْهُ كُلَّهُ If he does not attain all of it, نَالَ بَعْضَهُ Except he, he, he attains part of it. Anybody who seeks anything, whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. 
If you do it with jid and sidq, jid means hard work, striving, and you do it with sidq, meaning you don't associate any other actions with it, you do it alone. You would attain it all, or you will attain some of it. And the reason why he wants to say some of it is because no one is able to ever attain knowledge in his all. As some of the scholars they said, Give everything of yours to knowledge. What will you do? You It will give you some of it in return. Knowledge, you have to give everything. You have to give out your, 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 your money. You have to give everything you own. Your time, your effort, your hard work, your shabab, everything. And then knowledge will look at you and say, okay, take this. It will give you something in return. But it won't give you all of it in return. Because no one's able to get to the bottom of knowledge and say, yeah, yeah I finished it, alhamdulillah. <coughs> I don't need to seek knowledge anymore. I'm good now. I can be a businessman. Huh? I finished knowledge. Islamic studies, I did my time. I studied, I attained knowledge. I became a scholar. I don't need to do that anymore. Alhamdulillah, I'm good. You hear people say that. And that shows that they didn't even understand the beginning of knowledge then. Let alone to finish knowledge. The author then brings a line of poetry. This line, line of poetry is Islamia to Safadi. And it's a Bahrul Basit. Islamia to Safadi. It's a Lamia by Safadi. Al Jiddu bil Jiddi wal Hirmanu bil Kasali. The word Al Jiddu. No, sorry, Al Jaddu bil Jiddi, sorry. Al Jaddu bil Jiddi wal Hirmanu bil Kasali. Yours says Jiddu, right? Two. No, nothing, nothing. It doesn't say any other haraka on it. Does it two have two haraka at the same time? Some people got two haraka at the same time. Yeah? Yours does? Yes, yeah, sah. Good. Yours has fatha and kasra both at the same time, right? Sahih. It does. The kasra is wrong. The reason why he did both of them, it means that both of them can be said. The fatha is right. <coughs> and the fatha falls as three meanings. The fatha is the correct. And it falls as three meanings. One is a naf'u benefit. Ma'an al-ula is a naf'u. The second one is ghina, richness. The third one is abu al-ab, your granddad, your dad's dad. Here, it means the first two, not the granddad. Benefit and richness is the first. Second, first is the, uh, benefit. Second one is richness. The third one, it means the granddad, your dad's dad, or your mom's dad. Sah? It doesn't mean granddad here. It just means the first two. So he means benefit, or he means to be rich. Al jaddu bil jiddi, being rich and benefiting. It comes with bil jiddi, working hard. Huh? Wal hirmanu bil kasali. And to be prevented from something, it comes from what? Laziness. So pay attention. Al jaddu bil jiddi, benefiting. Am I becoming rich? in something. When, when, when you become rich in something, you've benefited from it. Al jaddu bil jiddi. Benefiting from something is after you strove. After you what? <coughs> after you strove. Wal hirmanu bil kasari. And to be prevented from something is due to your laziness. Fansab tusib an qareebin ghayat al amali. Fansab. Get tired. Tusib. You will attain. An qareebin. From very close, very soon you will attain ghayat al amali, the ultimate hope that you had. Fonsab here means to busy yourself, to get yourself tired in doing something. And that's why Allah said to the Prophet, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ If you finish ibadah and you finish fasting, you finish hajj, you finish Psalm. Brothers, I'm asking a question. What would you what would what would you think somebody would say to you? 
relax, right? Chill. فإذا فرغت you finish the ibadah. Many people like, oh, the exam, I'm going to relax. Summer holidays, I'm going to chill. Allah said to the Prophet, فإذا فرغت هاي فانصب. Go to another ibadah. Doesn't stop. And that's how Muslims like. Holiday, inshaAllah ta'ala is in Jannah. There's no holiday for us. Sorry to say. I believe it doesn't have a utrah. Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, in his liqa bab al-maftuh, I, I sleep listen, listening to it. So sometimes they tell him to do lectures. He does a little reminder, 10-15 minutes reminder, and after his question and answers, he listens. So I listen to it. And one of them was the summer holidays where he, he had to speak. So students had just finished their, their exam, exams, so he did a lecture for them. And at the lecture he said at the beginning, I just wanted to tell you all that there is no holiday for a believer. A believer doesn't have a holiday. Holiday for a believer is what? Yawm al-Akhirah. It's not when you put one leg in Jannah, it's when you put both legs in Jannah. Well, I also, a part of your body is still out, you still don't have a holiday. <laughs> Let alone, you're not knowing where you're going to go into Jannah. Then the author says, فانهض بهمتك واستيقظ من الغفلة فإن العبد إذا رزق همة عالية فتحت له أبواب الخيرات وتسابقت إليه المسمرات وتسابقت إليه المسرات وتسابق وتسابقت إليه المسرات الشيخ سيز فانهض بهمتك واستيقظ من الغفلة فانهض means get up بهمتك with your aspiration واستيقظ and wake up من الغفلة from heedlessness wake up stop being heedless فإن العبد أي سليف إذا رزق همة عارية إذا السليف is given high aspiration فتحت له أبواب الخيرات إذا a person is given high aspiration and Allah provides you with high aspirations all doors of good are going to come your way وتسابقت إليه المسرات and the joyful things will hasten towards you things that bring about joy for you مسرات is the joyful things تسابقت they will hasten to you they will come running to you one after the other. They're competing between themselves to come to you. We'll take inshallah ta'ala 10 minutes break. And I think then we should start the Nukhbat al-Fikr. And we'll stop this one for now. We'll have 10 minutes break. Relax. After 10 minutes we come back inshallah ta'ala. I'll conclude this one here inshallah ta'ala. And we'll carry on later. Bidnillah al -Kareem. Anything which I have said wrong or incorrect is for me as shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayh.